Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Red Rock Harley Live on the, <laughs> on the Vegas Woo! Video Network, uh, the show for Harley enthusiasts who are looking for the latest and greatest about the best motorcycles in the world. That's right. Uh, we're going to help you get the most out of your bike, throw some insider information your way, overall to help enhance your motorcycle experience. My name is Vince Argentine. I'll be your host of Red Rock Harley Live. I'm also the service manager at Red Rock Harley Davidson. So thank you for stopping by. Hello, everyone, and my name is Diana Anaya. I will be one of your co-hosts. We will be broadcasting every first and third Friday of every month here at the Vegas Video Network Studio or catch us back at the dealership at Red Rock Harley Davidson in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, baby. And with all that live streaming, we're also going to make an audio and video version of this episode and all of our future episodes available for you on your favorite podcast and video distribution platforms. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, social media, you're all on it, we're all on it. You can check us out there as well. So, yeah, check us out. Let's get started. So for our premiere episode of Red Rock Harley Live, we really want to introduce to you, all of you viewers, uh, us, Red Rock Harley Davidson, tell you a little bit about what you should expect from us every first and third Friday coming up. Uh, so Red Rock Harley Davidson, fantastic yes. place to work. Amazing dealership. We're very fortunate, both of us, to be employed by Red Rock Harley Davidson. We're at 2260 South Rainbow, corner of Rainbow and Sahara. Yeah. Um, that location, we've been there for about almost 11 years. That is so crazy because I did not even know that. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful shop. Um, it, we've come a long way. Yeah. You know, before this big, beautiful facility, we were much, much smaller. Uh, right around the corner at 7100 Sahara uh, just years back. And then all the way back to our, our shop down over off of West Flamingo. Uh, but our current setup, we have the largest new and used motorcycle inventory in Southern Nevada. Our parts department has over 15,000 parts in stock. And if it's not in stock, we can get it in stock. Uh, and I'm proud to say we just had a big meeting this morning. We did. Yeah. We're on pace and service to have a better year than last year. And last year we were awarded the number one volume service department in the country by wow, Harley Davidson awesome. Motor Company. Yes. So, yeah, so, so things are things are going great. Things are going really great. Uh, a little bit about myself. Again, my name is Vince Argentine. I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. Um, went to MMI down in beautiful Orlando. Wow. Had to get out of the snow. You know, oh, had to get out of the snow. <laughs> I, I don't do well in cold weather. Got in a little bit of a motorcycle accident when I was younger. Uh, a picture we've got here is actually what my bike looked like when it was all done uh, mm. after the UPS truck ran it over. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the, the little the little touches of brown and bronze were a little uh, a I, little oh, a little I throwback to the right to the UPS truck that didn't <laughs> see me. <laughs> um, but that was really how it all started for me. You wow. know, I, I got that first bike. My dad bought it for me when I was 15. My dad rode, my brother rode, my uncles rode. And that's kind of how I got pulled into it. But after really personally taking that thing apart, putting it back together, something that I loved, something I had worked on for so long and so hard. Is that um, when you really got the feel of it? Like, I love doing this? Yeah, I knew there was nothing else I really wanted to do after that. You yeah. know, Mike Plant, our, our awesome boss, always tells a story about he started with uh, Harley Davidson because he didn't want to get a real job. And uh, I'm kind of at the same spot. You know, when I grow up someday, but working for Harley is pretty, pretty badass. Oh, yeah. Uh, that what... picture there, that's my current ride. Uh, come a long way. Onto a Harley off of a Honda was a good step. That's your uh, new baby? That's that. It's my 2000 Ultra. A little bit of a project. I got the front wheel on there, but it's always a, a work in progress. You know how these bikers are. You know, can't, <laughs> can't ever leave anything well enough alone <laughs> yeah i know you uh, guys always got to upgrade something but i've been with red rock for about four years uh, as a service manager for about two we're always here to help uh, one of the cool things about our shop from my boss to his boss to the guys that work for me and, and the ladies in motor clothes we all ride you know yeah. and that's really what it's all about for me so I'm, i ride passenger but you know i'm i'm right there <laughs> <laughs> dana tell us a little bit about yourself okay so i am originally from well, I was born in Orange County, but I've lived in Vegas since I was like three years old. So basically, I'm from Vegas. I started with um, Harley Davidson actually five years ago. They reminded me at the meeting today. That's right. Like, Congratulations. Jeez, like, I've been here five years. <laughs> Crazy. But I absolutely love it. I love the whole, you know, bike scene. I don't fully ride, you know, but I love to ride passenger. I just love the whole biker scene. Everything about it is just amazing to me. Like the... Being at the dealership, the type of people that we work with, you know, the clients, everything. I love it. 
It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's a definitely a lot of fun. And that's what we're here for today, folks, and what we're going to be continuing to be here for for a while, uh, to kind of bring you guys into our world. You know, we get to do this every day. Yes. We get to see the behind the scenes. We get to deal with all the cool people that, uh, that are in this industry and in this scene, and we want to welcome you into it. Um, so to tell you a little bit about what to expect, uh, some of the things that we're going to be talking about here, where it all starts, an actual Harley. Yeah. You know, the motorcycles, the new ones, the old ones, changes in the industry, everything about the Harley Davidson brand and product is one of the main things that we really want to be here to give you a reliable resource to understand what's going on. Um, nextly, and, and most importantly to us, we want to hear from you. You guys make this all happen. So if you've got questions, if you want to hear about something, you need more information, anything that we can bring into your world, uh, go ahead and write us an email at rrhl at vegasvideonetwork.com. Post your questions on Facebook. Uh, come in and see us and ask. But anything that you want to see featured here, we'd be happy to, to bring right to your to your cell phone, computer, TV, however you're watching us today. Yes, please ask. And if we don't know the answers, we will get you the answers. <laughs> and we talked about some of the cool people that we've met. Yes. So we are also going to be talking about amazing riders. We're going to do a rider spotlight. There's so many cool people in this city that ride, and we're going to get you guys a little bit more familiar with riders here in Vegas. And, you know, just from their stories, how they started riding, what they ride, what, you know, just everything about what they like to do and why they love to ride. It takes a unique breed to be a, an employee of the motorcycle industry. You know, I, I'm fortunate that I literally love what I do. Yeah. You know, I get to ride every day. I get to be around bikes every day. And, and that says a lot. And, and there's a lot of cool people that feel the same way. You know, um, if you haven't seen our videos from the um, Bell Brawl stunt show, we talked to a lot of vendors. That was such a cool show. A lot of people that work in the industry. Yeah. Um, like our buddy Woody from Drag Specialty. Some of those guys, some really cool people that have chosen their passion as a career. Uh, so one of the things we're going to be doing is the vendor showcase. We're going to be bringing them in, asking them questions, highlighting some aftermarket product. Most importantly, getting you the hookup uh, on some discounts. Uh, always yeah, looking to save you guys a couple a bucks and give you guys a reason to, to come and see us and, and save you a couple bucks so you can save it for your next oil change or that next thing that you want to add onto your bike. So we're going to definitely be doing that. Um, and then the news. You know, you know there's always um, – Harley's always in the news, and there's always good news, bad news, indifferent news. Um, but we want to be here to bring all that stuff to your attention and keep you guys updated. Um, actually, just recently – uh, yeah. October 1st, there was a change in the, in the laws here in the state of Nevada that previously, if you're on a three-wheeler or a 49C or under displacement motor, you didn't have to wear a helmet. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And, and October 1st, that just changed. So stop in and see Patrick, the folks in general merchandise. We've got plenty of helmets, but if you are on a three-wheeler, if you're on a moped or a smaller displacement vehicle, uh, don't get caught without that helmet. Stay safe. Come on down. Get yourself a lid uh, so you can travel in you know safety. Uh, yeah, that, definitely. I mean, helmet safety is... Very, very well, I heard, of, I heard of a funny statement this morning, actually, that uh, whether your bike is 49 cc's or, you know, 1800 cc's, at 30 miles an hour, your head doesn't care. Yeah. So, <laughs> so get yeah, yourself, a, get yourself a DOT lid. <laughs> Stay safe out there. Avoid the ticket. Right. Take care of yourself. Yes. Make sure it's DOT approved. And then service tips. Uh, you know, we all got them. We, our bikes, checking tire pressure, changing oil. There's a lot of stuff that we need to do to make sure that you're staying safe, that the bike is reliable, that you're not going to be stuck on the side of the road. Um, so, and especially when you're getting ready for that next big trip, uh, we're going to show you some service tips and ways for you guys to save some money and uh, to get a little bit more information and knowledge about your the thing you're putting between your you know between your legs before you get on the road before that next ride. Yeah, awesome. So we're also going to be talking to you guys about um, events. Just not events just happening here, but all over the country, biker events. You know, we're going to be telling you guys where to go, where to stay, what to see, and what good rides are in that area. You know, so if you're from out of town and you're in Vegas, come check us out. We'll tell you where to go, where to stay. Just have fun on your bike. Definitely here in Vegas, too, because one of the other things that we're going to be profiling is going to be RRHD rides, Red Rock rides. Um, this is an opportunity for us to let those of you from far away that are watching us, when you come into Las Vegas, rides from an hour away to a day away. Um, just give you an idea. We've all done it. We've been there. We know the right roads to take, the scenic routes, how to avoid some of this crazy construction and traffic yeah. and all the nonsense. Um, so firsthand experience from us and some of the people that we're going to bring in, some videos we're going to show you about some rides from Mount Charleston to Valley of Fire and Havasu and some other really cool rides that are here right in our own yeah, backyard. we definitely have some, a lot of them here in town. Cool. Well, so... If you guys need anything, if you got any questions, definitely shoot them our way. But uh, let's get started with some Harley highlights. Yes, let's do it. 
So one of the things that we want to talk about today is one of the most popular bikes in the Harley lineup. Which is? The Electroglide family, the Touring family, the, the Ultra Classics, the Street Glides, anything with that FLH designation uh, is really one of the oldest and most sought after models that Harley has on the line. Nice, and we got a picture of one back here. Harley's been making bikes for 117 years, and 71 years ago is when they first came out with the FLH. Wow. So the FL designation with all this alphabet soup of FXST and FXDWG, it, it I really. Know, all that can be a little confusing. I know it confuses me. We're here to break it down, yeah. make it simple. <laughs> uh, the FL just basically says it's the big bike. The, the FL is, is the, the heavyweight powertrain, the, the bigger bikes of the Harley Davidson family. Um, the H was first introduced in 1949. Uh, which is what we've got a, a picture of here. That's the first Hydroglide. Uh, it was Harley's first attempt at a really good, solid touring bike, making it a little bit more comfortable. The forks that you see in this picture, the telescoping hydraulic forks, um, there was a really just a step up in comfort, uh, absorbing more of the bumps in the road, making you more comfortable while you're out there. Um, obviously, over the course of 71 years, a lot of changes. Oh, yeah, a lot of changes. definitely. Look at the seat on that one. That looks like something I can probably ride right that now. That spring seat, yeah, seat, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and, and talking about the seat and actually more importantly going from that hardtail suspension, uh, in 1958, Harley-Davidson went to the Duo Glide, which is what we see a picture of here. The Duo Glide was the first model that Harley had put the uh, dual shocks on the back end, the coil spring shocks. So I now... Yep, that's it right there. Those chrome shocks on the side, that's going to absorb more of the bumps in the road uh, than the seat and your lower back wheel. So making it, again, more comfortable. Now they upgraded the suspension in 49, put the shocks on in 58, uh, and just really a good, good start at what is now the modern-day ultimate touring machine. Yeah. Comfort, comfort I mean, is key. You can already see the difference in the seat and the handlebars. And they've been around for a long time, but there have been a lot of changes. Um, more importantly, catching up a couple years, 1965 was a big year for Harley Davidson. Mm -hmm. uh, 1965 was when the Dual Glide, the Hydro Glide, all became what is now known as the modern day Electro Glide. Uh, Electro Glide, very quick, very simple. Electro Glide, why? Electric start. Do they still make that color? I don't know. I got a painter that can paint any color you want, though. That's great. <laughs> uh, the Electro Glide, no more kickstart. Now they've got the Electro Glide, a lot more user friendly. Hop on it, more reliable. Get on it and go uh, in 65. Uh, but there's a lot of memories with these bikes, you know, and there's been a lot of changes. We've got a really cool couple of pictures coming up. Um, just that, that really hits home for me and my riding experience when I started with my dad. Our friend Nick sent us a couple of pictures. Uh, this oh. is actually the first. 1965 Electro Glide west of the Mississippi. Wow. Uh, it was Nick's great great grandfather's uh, in the picture on the left. Nick hanging out on the tank, getting his first taste for Harley Davidson, which I know he still loves. He's a great customer at the shop. He's yeah, got a, a he's really a badass guy. bike that uh, our friend Hero Koiso put together the motor on. Um, but yeah, it's just definitely that picture there shows, especially with the pictures coming up, the monumental changes that Harley's made with technology Wait, and changes. That little belly never went away, huh, Nick? Baby huh? Nick. <laughs> <laughs> So that picture there, um, definitely a lot of changes. Um, the fairing is probably one of the biggest, most notable changes. Uh, the windshield went away in 1969. They had the PNA option, the parts and accessory option of a Batwing fairing kit, wow. uh, which is a lot more modern day and what we're used to now. The FLHS was the only electric glide that ever didn't have a fairing. Uh, looking at that picture right there, the gauges were all mounted on the, the fuel tank, just a big windscreen. Uh, that's very similar to what's on the modern day Road Kings now. And then in 1971, that became standard. And now everybody has the Batwing fairing, like in this picture here, that big white fairing on the front, re reducing air drag, uh, definitely protecting the rider from some of the elements, just a lot more comfortable, a lot more protection. What are like these big exhausts? That's the old school exhaust. Yeah, the old Y pipe. They, uh, they've definitely made a lot of changes. The motor from that now all the way up to the 107s, 114s, 117s, big, big stuff going on. So after the, the Batwing fairing came out in 71, um, that really, that look stayed around for a long time, almost all the way up to 2014. The frame was really went through a lot of changes. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they changed the front forks, they changed the rear shocks, and then they had to address the frame. Uh, and they did that in 2009. Okay. Uh, with the 2009 chassis, there was about 250 changes that year where they went to the wider 180 rear tire, uh, thicker tubing, whole new engine mount design, rubber mounted motor. You know, everybody says Harley shake. Wow. They do, uh, but with some of the newer technology, they've been able to absorb a lot of that. And in 2009, that really is what kind of transformed them into the 
the, the pristine riding experience. This I mean, one's ready for me. Look, they just want to throw me in the back and let's go. Right? <laughs> let's go. 2008 and 2009 was a huge transition year. Um, 2008, I had a sales manager that used to always tell people in, in a 2008, if you were to do the tightest circles or the tightest figure eight maneuvers, Diana's favorite. My, my, <laughs> my favorite thing to do. <laughs> um, we always said, you know, if you take a 2009, you could do circles inside of your circles on a 2008. It was a monumental year. Um, the frame has stayed mostly the same since then. Some, some, some um, suspension changes and things like that. But ultimately, that's the frame that we still have now on these 2020 models. So big, big stuff going on. Yeah, very um, nice. And then in 2014, we've seen some similarities in all these pictures as far as the look. 2014, it got a big, big cosmetic change. Looking at this bike here, looking at the saddlebags, looking at the tour pack, a lot of line changes, uh, different style latches for the saddlebags. So now you can actually get into your bags when you're sitting on the bike. Um, the tour pack's a little bigger, but stepped down a little different. Um, one of the most monumental cosmetic changes is that vent that was added to the fairing uh, to eliminate some of the buffeting and make the rider more comfortable uh, with that, that adjustable air vent. Right in the center in the top of the middle of the fairing, that, gr that black opening uh, is controlled by a button inside of the top fairing that you can actually open and close depending on the, the riding conditions and how much air is passing through there to make you more comfortable when you're on the road. Nice. It's all about comfort. Right. Well, and, and the cool thing about the 2014 lineup when they did Project Rushmore is that was about a six-year project that Harley-Davidson did. And, and it was a real attempt at rider feedback, you know, going out to Sturgis, going out to some of these events that me and Diane are going to be talking about. If you haven't been, some ones that we can recommend. Um, but some stuff that they took that you would only know from being on a bike, from spending a lot of time in the saddle, from riding across the country, little things like even looking at the, the chrome saddlebag guard in the back. The way it's cut down and comes out instead of coming straight out from the frame to the side of the saddlebag. Yeah. That was straight up from passengers. Oh, I mean, the, the, the not so happy passengers, it gets hot, it's resting on the back of your leg, it's not so comfortable. Something that an engineer would never know or, or a um, test right, rider would never know unless you're subjected to that. You yeah. know? And we know you keep your passenger happy, you get to ride a whole lot more. So that was a, a nice improvement there. Yes. So keep me happy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was also when coolant was introduced, so bringing out some of the modern technology, hiding the, the radiator down in the lower fairings, putting some coolant through the top end to, to keep the engines a little cooler, a little bit more performance, and just a nice overall step up in technology and, and keeping our riders happy and keeping in mind what, what we want as customers and not just what the motor company thinks we want, which is a, something Harley's really good about doing for us. Yeah, definitely. So, um, we've got a testimony here uh, from, of a rider that we found that's owned several of these models, 2009, 2014, 2018. Uh, just to show how some of those changes have been passed on to the passengers, going from a 2009 to a 2014, putting miles on it. Uh, the 2018's got 500 miles on that now. Um, but yeah, it just definitely shows that uh, people are happy. They're they're liking the bikes. They're riding you know more and more of them. The touring line has definitely got a lot of bikes on the road. Uh, the Electric Glide standard that we see here is another example of that modern day Electric Glide starting 71 years ago. That's the Electric Glide standard, a little bit more stripped down, simple, uh, no tour pack, no radio, just a good base platform yeah. for all those customizations that you want to do and, nice and, and kind of trick it out a little bit. Oh, and now that brings us to 2020. Um, 2020 has been a pretty, a pretty awesome year so yeah. far. Um, it just kind of piggybacking onto some of that technology from 09 to 2014. That was the big push this year in 2020, um, especially like with the 2020 CVO. Ooh, um, what's a CVO? CVO, good question, is custom vehicle operations. Uh, that was a model that started uh, on the early FXRs. That was the first attempt at kind of a customized from the factory bike. Yeah. Uh, in a nutshell, bigger motor, badass custom paint. And a lot of stuff out of that parts and accessory catalog for those that don't want to design and kind of pick out their own. Not to say you can't modernize it or change it and customize it as much as you want, but a lot of it's already done from the factory. You know, you've already got the grips on there, the tricked out seat, the mirrors, the levers, the things that you could just hop on this bike and, and So and this hit the is road. the big daddy, huh? That's the creme de la creme right here. <laughs> it's the CVO. And with some of them, depending on the paint scheme, it's very limited. A lot of the parts for a CVO are VIN restricted, so you can't just go and buy a street glide and then go buy all the parts off of a CVO and make it a CVO. Oh, the wow. motor company does that by design for those that have invested into it to keep that exclusivity, to keep that that CVO branding as, yeah. as a one-of-a-kind, just top-of-the-line Harley that, that they have. A um, couple other cool things that Harley's come out with this year for technology. Um, one of the big ones, the Reflex Defensive Riding System, um, that is an awesome, awesome system that's going to give riders more confidence than they've ever had before in their bike. 
Um, it's a, a system. It's actually multiple systems put in place um, from the advanced braking system to tire pressure monitoring systems to uh, the drag slip and assist where if your rear wheel starts slipping, it's going to reduce the torque delivered to the rear tire. So if you are on wet roads or something like that. So things that would prevent you from riding on a regular, everyday, kind of crappy day, uh, yeah. it'll give you that confidence that you can get out and ride. And that's great because, you know, a lot of riders sometimes, uh, well, the ones that are not so experienced, you know, they if it starts to rain or the weather is not looking good, they're a little scared to get on their bike. And, sure. You know? This and is know, definitely going to help them with that. Yeah, okay. definitely. And like even, I mean, I don't ride yet, but, you know, and I'm sure I know I have, you know, I would be scared of my bike if I'm going uphill and I'm coming down. Like, oh, well, that's God, one of the one of the really cool systems about this uh, RDRS is the advanced braking system, where if you're on an incline, you can apply your brakes and you're going to feel a little pulsation and lever in the pedal, but it's actually going to lock your braking system. So if you are trying to accelerate from an incline, you could it's eventually you, you could essentially take your hand off the lever that bike's not going to roll backwards on. You. Oh, perfect. So it definitely yeah. makes it a, a whole lot more of a confident ride um, with this new technology. Uh, the other thing that they've got this year is also the HD Connect system. The new telecommunication unit that they put inside the fairing allows you to kind of check on your bike and communicate with your bike from your cell phone. Oh, uh, really? So yeah, so to go from 71 years ago, we didn't have radios to now you can talk to your bike and have your bike talk to you on your cell phone is definitely uh, wow, a step in the right cool. direction into yeah. 2020. Um, that's a, a pretty cool system they came out with, and that is only on the 2020 models. It comes on uh, trikes and police models. We can also have it on um, an option on any of the 2020 touring lineup. So it'll tell you what your odometer is, what your tire pressure is, a lot of different things. It's going to be on the live wire when that comes out, too. Uh, and it'll tell you about your security system. If someone's tampering with your bike, it's going to send you an alert right to your cell phone. Oh, uh, that so is, yeah, that's super cool. Welcome yeah. to 2020, you know. Especially, you know, if you're parking your bike in a garage. I know how you boys are. Your bike is your baby. That's so it. So if anybody's <laughs> getting near, near it, touching it, you want to know. The, uh, the new radios that they came out with now um, last year it, with uh, incorporating Apple CarPlay and some of the other stuff, being more media friendly, depending on however you want to listen to your music. Uh, that's another feature on these new bikes that's, that's come really a long, long way. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. We've got a ton of them on the showroom floor over at Red Rock Harley Davidson. So if you guys have not got a chance to see the new 2020 models, come on out. Uh, take one for a test ride. Come see Dominic and Tommy and the guys and see what the new 2020s are all about. The bigger motors, the 107s, the 114s, the 117s long way from home from the original 74 inch motor that was in these things a uh, lot of power very very fun to to ride so if you haven't seen them come on down and uh, and, and check them out uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on coming up at the dealership we do we have a lot of upcoming events so um i'm going to tell you a little bit more about what we've got going on at the dealership for this month and next month so october 19th we have an all bikers matter um event which you can see right here. We're going to have um, food, entertainment, raffle prizes, everything. So come on down and see us. It's from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the dealership, Red Rock Harley-Davidson. We're on 2260 South Rainbow Boulevard. So come check that out. It's going to be pretty awesome. Steve Ritchie from Las Vegas Metro is going to be there that day. And uh, a great friend of the dealership. He's with Las he Vegas is. Metro, He's one of the... He's an amazing guy. And an amazing rider. Yeah. And he's going to be doing some demonstrations in the parking lot, uh, some advanced riding, um, getting yourself out of troubled situations, how to manipulate your brakes and clutch to really get the best out of that bike. So definitely check that out. Yeah. And also happening this month, October 26th, we have the Fall Open House also going on at the dealership, Red Rock Harley Davidson. Just sits right here. So come on down, check that out from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. This party's for a lot of you new riders out there too. Uh, anybody that has just recently purchased, thinking about purchasing, or just new on your bike, uh, we're inviting as many of you down as possible. We're going to have the jump start set up so you can jump on the bike in the showroom, twist the throttle, let the clutch out. If you've never rode, good opportunity to kind of see how it feels. Definitely, yeah. I definitely recommend that because I that's what I did at first before taking the class, and it really gave me, you know, the feel of the bike, touching the clutch, the throttle, everything. So, yeah, definitely come out and check that out and hop on it. And going into next month, November 2nd, we are going to be having a pancake breakfast. And also, there's going to be a Bloody Mary bar. All right. Ooh. <laughs> so come and check that out. That's going to be from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. We've got free pancakes and the Bloody Mary bar. Can't turn that down. What else do you need? <laughs> <laughs> uh, following that up the following Saturday, we've gotten together with our friends from Hogs and Heifers, Michelle and her crew. And we're planning a really great afternoon just hang out in the parking lot 
Uh, the Hogs and Heifers girls are all going to be there with their bar set up, some music going on. Come on down, show your support, hang out with us on November 9th for a Hogs and Heifers event as well. That will definitely be a good time, so definitely come check us out. So we've got a lot going on at the dealership. Uh, you can come by and see us. We're open seven days a week. Uh, come on down and hang out with us. Come take a test ride. Come take a tour of the shop. Check us out. Uh, in the service department, we've got a special going on right now also until the end of this month. <laughs> Uh, it's dino days. It's been loud at the shop the last yeah, couple of days. Yeah, it has been. We've got the, the dino room is running strong. All of our master technicians are in there doing dino tunes. We've got a special uh, saving you several hundred dollars. Any purchase of an exhaust system, a stage two, any performance parts that we install, uh, we're going to take a, a quite a bit of money off of that dino tune price for three ninety nine until the end of the month. That's um, a good deal. One of the things I'm really excited about, and we've never done it before, is we're, we're running a special right now. Uh, it's called Check Your Stats. Mm-hmm. A lot of people from Twin Camps to Milwaukee 8, Stage 1, Stage 2s, they don't know exactly what their bike is, especially if you bought a previously loved bike and you don't know what's all in the motor or whatnot. Um, Bring your bike down to Red Rock. Call one of our service riders. Get an appointment set up. Bring the bike in. Let's throw it on the dyno. We're going to do three power pulls. We'll print you a nice graph, show you exactly what your horsepower and your torque is so you know what your bike is doing numbers-wise. And then if you come back to us within 30 days and say, Vince, I need a little more, uh, we're going to make that happen. We're going to take $125 that you spent to find out what your stats are. We're going to take that off that build or off of that bill and invoice for you. So come on down. Um, check us out. Again, we're there seven days a week, so we've always got someone there to answer your questions, be there to, to help you guys out and get the best and most out of your bike. All right, so we appreciate you guys stopping by. Uh, on behalf of myself, Red Rock Carly, Diana, we yes. appreciate yes. you guys, and uh, we'll see you in two come weeks. Come check us out, you guys. Don't forget all of our questions.